The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. This is Ken Curra, market development agronomist for Pride Seeds. It's late July and we're here at the farm of Jan Peters in Langton uh, in Norfolk County. Uh, this is now the fun time of year in a corn agronomist's life and, and as, uh, as part of the Pride 300 bushel challenge we actually get to go to the field post pollination and, and see what we got. So that's the primary reason why we're here today is, is to evaluate pollination in the corn and, and see what effects the drought the last six weeks has had on the corn in terms of pollination and overall yield potential. We'll be looking at a couple other things today too. We brought our handy shovel with us. By and large from what I've seen this year the, the corn crop has outstanding roots on it and uh, we're going to evaluate some of those root mass uh, structures and then lower stocks and just uh, you know we're going to see what's, uh, what's helped try to propel these crops through the drought this summer. We're going to look at some uh, some leaf disease issues or potential for leaf disease and, and the benefits of fungicide applied at this point or in fungicide that has been applied over the last uh, 10 days here in this part of Ontario. Uh, so those are the two primary things we'll look at. Overall plant health in general and uh, Really at this point, like I said, this is, this is our first opportunity to get an initial evaluation of yield potential and also recognition that uh, the finish line is in sight. You know, we're about 45 to 55 days away from black layer depending on the weather over the next six weeks. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an exciting time now to, to actually get in the field and see what we got. So let's head on in. All right, so in this field, it's pollination time, and uh, you know it's late July. Uh, this was April planted corn. Um, corn plant basically, uh, under ideal conditions, is a 120 to 130 day plant, and really two half lives. It, uh, it takes the first 65 days of its life to reach tassel, which is what you're seeing up here, of course. And the pollen is just shed off this tassel, so you know we're entering that reproductive stage. The veg vegetative growth is done, and and uh, you know, uh, the corn is basically, it's in the process of pollinating. The leaves are just covered in, in pollen and pollen anthers. You can see all the yellow there. Uh, of course, it smells great in here. If you're an allergy sufferer like me, this is going to be a fun day walking cornfields. But uh, nonetheless, there is a pile of yellow pollen flying around in this field. And the ears are pollinating. So in this, uh, in this high yield field of ours, I'm really happy to see what amounts to pretty even ear development so far. You know, plant uniformity and ear uniformity is pretty good. And we can see some of the silks are starting to go from yellow to brown and dry off, which means pollination is, is nearing completion. That pollination can be a, uh, anywhere from a few days up to about a 10 day process. And then you get your first chance to really kind of figure out what you got. And that process is a little tedious, but actually pretty simple. If you basically take an ear, Try and break the shank back as far as you can, makes life a little easier. You hold it upside down, you start stripping leaves. And you can evaluate your pollination this way. Good set of fingernails helps. Find the edge of those leaves as you're peeling away. This crop here is nice and healthy, healthy. so these, uh, these husks are good and tight. It's got a nice husk layer on it. Now the whole point is to try to leave the silks intact as you peel it open. You don't want to remove those silks. And we can evaluate our pollination progress as we go. Almost there, got one more leaf to go. So, get all the leaves off it, hold it upside down, give it a shake. This ear is still pollinating. What we can see, anywhere where those silks are still attached is a kernel that hasn't pollinated yet. So there's still a little bit to go on the tip. Some of those silks are trapped in there by the swelling kernel, so they actually have detached from the kernel. They're just they're trapped in there in between the rows by the swelling. So I'll just kind of peel those out. So we have a few missed pollinations on on the underside of the tip of the cob here, but by and large it's pretty good. 
and we're actually in that white blister stage here you can see a little bit of yellow creeping in but there's our ear there's the odd miss along the car uh, along the cob which is not too bad so we've counted our, our total pollinated kernels on this uh, this ear this is a representative ear from the stand and there's 16 rows and it's about 34 35 kernels long and this field was planted at 36,000 back in the spring if you used a population of 34 to 36,000 to do your yield estimates you'd be uh, you'd be pretty safe we've got a pretty nice stand here we didn't lose very many plants at all in the spring pretty ideal spring conditions a kernel a bushel of uh, a bushel of grain corn has about 90,000 kernels in it so if you do your math here 16 rows by 34 long will give you 500 some odd uh, kernels on a, on a representative ear times 34,000 plants per acre divided by 90,000 kernels in that bushel you're gonna come up with about a 210 bushel yield expectation if you take that population up to 36,000 which is why we're pushing these higher populations uh, you'll see that yield the calculation comes out to about 225 another 15 bushels per acre so for that extra added investment in the seed and the metering equipment and then the time and care taken in the spring with your planter uh, if you can lay down a little bit extra population into a field that has great fertility like this uh, you're gonna come out okay in the end with a few extra bushels so overall really happy with what we see here Norfolk County has been a desert the last six weeks it's been really dry down here of course most of the county is light soil to begin with this is a little bit heavier sand loam here we got a pretty nice stand of corn pretty good fertility and some moisture holding capacity in this ground so uh, so this field is more fortunate than most in the area but uh, overall there's a lot to look forward to in the fall with I think a, a good 200 bushel uh, expectation in areas like this.